All right, so we, we saw the finished painting. We're going to get started here. First thing we'll do is um, for our drawing is let's get uh, some some lines in uh, parallel lines across the page according to what we can see here in the photograph. So this is um, uh, farm scene again. So we we know these are beautiful fields here and uh, we have some farm roads uh, that are going parallel across the um, picture here, one here. We have another road here going in toward the barns and the uh, the houses on the uh, property here on the farm. So I think maybe if we look at this, it looks like this main uh, distant horizon line, so to speak, of the ground is pretty much halfway on the page. And then up from there a little bit, there's the uh, mountains in the background. So there's some mountains back here. Um, in the far distance, they're purple in color. And uh, what else do we have? Some trees and so forth, and the barns and the silos. So it looks like we can get probably a, a halfway mark here on the page. So I'm doing it by feel. That's pretty close to halfway. I just look at the... I'll do a... Uh, I'll create a pencil line around the inside of this. Here like that. So we can kind of see it a little better. So that's our rectangle. And again, halfway is about here. So we'll do a line about halfway. And that line is really very, very straight. So we can just use a ruler and then draw a light line across there just so we can see it. And uh, Then what I'll do is I'll start to, I'm going to start with the barns and silo and the buildings on this farm. So I think if I look at it and I, yeah, so I'm looking at this, this looks about, halfway so we could say to make things easier we'll take this building here we'll make this the halfway point where the well this is actually all one building I'm going across here like so so I am going to that's about halfway right there on the picture so if I make a line here just a small center line here just sort of a hash mark for the halfway point and then we say that this is about halfway right here. I'll start at that point and we'll just start doing our contour drawing. So I'm going to go here and just go across. And if anything, I'll make things a little smaller. But I'm going to try to keep it to the closest bit of scale I can do. And And there's this section here. Then we go over here like so. And this roof slightly goes up on an angle like this and comes across like so. And then it goes to about there, it comes down there goes across here for just a little bit and then it goes up like this and then it goes like this like that That's pretty much the the main building. 
and then the silos over here we can get those in here these are one there And another one there. And then we have another barn over here. This red barn, like so. Like that. Just gonna get this and some tree shapes here, and then over here we have some vents on the top of the barn, and then we have some tops of trees over here. Then over here there's another roof and barn building uh, a little bit beyond here, uh, beyond this one, a little bit further in the distance, about the same height. And that comes out a little ways and then it looks like it has a similar roof, like so. And then there's another smaller barn over here or building and then there's some more bushes and things over here like that and then there is trees over here beyond this building over here So I'm just carefully getting what I see. So over here, there seems to be another small building like this, like that. And then over here, there's another building over here, like that. And I might have made this a little too far. And there's another building back over here as well too. Another roof over here. And there we have it. That's pretty much all of the information that runs all the way across this section here. Next thing we can do is maybe we'll get some windows in here. So I'll get these windows in going across. Looks like there's quite a few. And I'll just try to evenly space them like I'm seeing in the photograph like that. Over here there's some things, not sure what everything is there. It looks like there are some bushes over here. And it looks like there's another attached building here. And then we have three windows here. Okay, so we can kind of see we've taken our time. We just kind of keep looking back and forth, referencing our photograph. That's the key to this. 
just referencing the photograph. You could use a ruler and measure things. That, that works too. Um, let's say you had an iPad. An iPad is about the size of this paper right here, this uh, sheet of watercolor paper we have. And I also have the... Um, I placed the mat over top of it too, and, and that's how I got my, my tape where I was going to put my tape and my pencil line, as you can see, so that we have enough room that if we put a mat over top, we'll have plenty of painting to, to use our mat if we want to frame it, if it comes out really good. And so that is really the main uh, idea. So again, but if you have an iPad or a, a laptop or a home computer screen, you can actually take a photograph like this. And if it's on an iPad or a laptop screen, you could actually just measure each of these buildings with like a ruler. You can get a ruler and actually just measure it as you go to get all of your buildings as far as how high they are and how wide they are. So that you could almost keep referencing back with a measuring tool like a ruler in millimeters or in standard American uh, inches and uh, so forth. So, you know, that's a... That's also a way you can get a painting like this really accurate. So, you know, there's always that um, kind of uh, method or technique you can use of actually physically measuring something in a photograph. And then if it's on a screen that's the same size as the paper, then you're just going to, whatever the measurement is here, you make the same measurement here. And you just keep transferring the measurements height and width of all the buildings and the roofs. And that'll get you the same result here. I did it by eye. And you can do it too, just doing it by eye like I did it. You just don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be exact. You just try to end up the same way we have here in this photograph. See here, I went a little bit too far toward the um, outer edge of this um, paper here. So I'd rather see more of this mountain over here because it does look really interesting. It gives a really beautiful feeling of depth in the painting, three-dimensional quality with that mountain in the background there. But we're still going to have it there, just maybe not as much as I might like or... You'll have to do that by feel and kind of see how things go as you're uh, drawing your painting. And then we have another. And, and then it, actually what does work out good is you can kind of see how this red barn is hugging this side of the picture. So here I started this red barn or actually wound up being a little further away from the edge of the uh, border, which is great because now we have a little bit of that. Same idea as this, which is like some distant uh, mountains on both sides of the scene and buildings. So that's a good thing. So yeah, we have a pretty good handle on this. We can actually get this uh, road in here. So I kind of look at the angle of that road and it's like this. I could just take my pencil and bring it right like that. And then kind of just see... And then we can make them like that. It gets a little bit wider as it goes this way. And then here we can start to get the, um, the grass and the fields here. Looks like a fence with some like weeds along the fence high grass and tall grass and tall weeds right along this fence here. It looks like there's fence posts. So let's let's do that first. That's about here. Like that. Then there's that darker, maybe this is where that darker grass is. Up top. And then there's some posts here. And then there's a wider strip of like some uh, hay and things, a field that's got all bits of hay on there. And they're actually gathering up the uh, hay bales with their carts. And they have some horses pulling the carts. So let's see here. We got uh, another couple posts here. Another one there. Another one here. Okay, so we're just kind of getting our details in here. And then in the foreground here, there's a little more. There's posts there and a rail. So posts and a rail. And then two more posts here. 
and a few more there. One more there. So it looks like they had some fences and things over here as well. Like that. So I'm just making those marks with pencil where I see the fence posts and things. And now let's, uh, we'll do our carts with the hay. So the first one is here, which is right by the road here. And there's a dark shadow under there. And then there's some horses over here. Like that. And then there's another cart over here. darker under the cart like that and there's some wheels under there and shadow on this side and then there's you can see they have it stacked up so there's rows and then all the bales they're kind of square rectangular shape so I'll just put some marks on my paper. No need to get too much details with this. Um, then we will put a little bit of grass here in between there. And then we have another road cutting across here. And there's a lighter bit of grass over here that's a little bit lighter. And then we have a row here. It's not that wide though, so I'm just trying to follow the photograph. It's kind of a thin line of greener grass there. And then there's the um, bit of like a golden uh, patch of uh, earth here, like that. That cuts across here. And then the rest is green fields over here in this front area here. All right, so we have pretty much everything that we need. I can go over here with a little more darker lines so we can see the sketch. So I'll just go over these lines a little bit darker so we can see them a little clearer. There we go. And another one here. Like so. And then we have our road here. Like that. And I think that's really looking good. That looks fine. All right, so we're going to paint next. I uh, hope you'll uh, have your paints ready to go. I'm going to get my palette. Spritz it with some water, moisten up the paints, and I'll readjust this too so we can fit our palette here in the picture over on this side as we normally do. So I might zoom back a little bit too, but uh, it'll look pretty much the same here. So I'll just have to change my setup off camera, and when we come back, we'll, we'll see a difference. You know, obviously it'll be set up just a little bit different, but uh, we'll be right back and we'll get started with the painting. Okay, we're going to get started with our painting here. Let's um, key in on some darks. I think it's best to start with darks if we can. I always mention this because for a painting like this, it's not. It's more of um, a lot of smaller uh, subject matter, like sections of buildings and roofs and silos and trees and the fields. And this isn't really a painting that I would kind of consider doing the glazing technique with. So that's kind of where I always mention when you're looking at a painting you're going to do. Um, if you're working from my videos, of course, I kind of think it through first and then we, we kind of go through it play by play here. And then we see, you know, 
how we're going to develop the painting and what techniques and methods we're going to use as we go. But if you're in your uh, if you're on your own and you're doing some projects as you know during the week or uh, maybe on weeks that maybe you're not following along, um, you know you might be doing your own projects, looking up photographs of your own that you'd like to work with, and so on and so forth. So when you uh, decide to work uh, on your own and do something that's maybe not something we're doing here on the channel. You can just, you know, usually look at a picture and kind of ask yourself, uh, what do I think is going to be the best method and technique to use? Uh, would it be the a la prima method? Would it be the glazing technique? Maybe a combination of both. So on this painting, I right away I see that there's a lot of um, really nice um, darks mixed with some mid-tones, mostly mid-tones and some really nice darks and a few lights here and there. I guess the sky, I consider that pretty light, the sky. Um, and then, of course, the white, white buildings, the white barn. And then, you know, some of the roofs are, are white as well. And so you have some good, good lights there in the sky, of course. And then your middle tones are, you know, the mountains in the background, the fields. Um, these things, you know, the uh, horses are dark black. Um, so these, you can see a variation of some different tonal values here. So there's a lot of lights and darks in this painting. But it is kind of more of a technical painting where probably just best to go in and start getting the darks in and that sets the pace for your painting once you have your darks in then you can kind of gauge how you're going to be making your middle tones you using your darks as your first kind of like keynote so in a sense your darks become like a key where it kind of sets the tone uh, the tonal value pattern for your painting and right away you're saying ah the darks. I'm doing those first and then you start focusing in on that and developing it and as we go let's start we'll get some green uh, we'll use some green up here um, lighter green over here we'll take some brown mix some brown into those greens to warm them up a little bit maybe a little bit of red and orange in there too get some nice olivey looking greens so um, yeah, let's start out with some of these trees. And I'm using my uh, Prang number six uh, brush that comes with the set. And uh, we'll just get these uh, bits of trees here. You can use a little f finger blotting and things to sometimes get a little more of an interesting look. Uh, I'll go with a little bit of a uh, blue here. Maybe over here, a little bit of a blue and brown to just get a little bit of a darker darker green let's see I'll get some more green there we go that's a little bit of a darker olivey green for this side over here so right away when I start noticing the um, lights and darks in the picture the uh, shadowing and things like that I want to kind of think to myself can I see a real definite shadow pattern um, where the lights coming from and um, I'm thinking I'm thinking the light is probably up overhead midday and um, it looks like it is coming from this side over here I think so I'll make my light insignia like this just to have an idea I think that's where the light is coming from uh, the sunlight and it's kind of high in the sky too and I can tell that by the um, shadows that are underneath the eaves of the roof and also on the sides of the buildings it looks like there's dark spots on the sides of the buildings on the left side of the buildings over here left side over here so the darks are on the left side of all the trees and the buildings so we know the lights coming this way that's pretty kind of clear we can see that so that's how we'll just go about this. We'll just start getting in our darker side of the trees over here. I rinse off my brush. I have a tissue usually or a sponge next to my water pail. I'll just check off a little bit of water just to dry my brush a little bit so there's not too much water on there. That's one of the best things I think you can, you'll can. you find. Uh, if you focus in on the... Um, the, the dryness of your brush, making sure that you rinse your brush and then take some of that water off your brush and then go in and do some work by getting some paints and things. You'll find that'll help you tremendously with watercolors because especially here, this is a very kind of like a lot of small shapes here and we want to kind of get them accurate. If we were to let our 
brush be full of water and just flowing with water and dripping water. And then we're over here in the palette and there's all kinds of big, huge puddles of water in our palette with our paint mixtures. That's not going to really be good for this type of painting. This painting, we're almost really painting with straight paint with just a little bit of water, just a tiny bit of water to spritz on the palette here. So you'll notice that I'm not really going to be adding hardly any water at all as we go. And then I'm going to go over and get some purple for the mountains in the background. I'll take a little blue and a little purple. Maybe a little bit of red too. Like that. So I'll make a good purple color. This I might add a little bit of water to that. And then we'll do that. We'll add that purplish blue with a little bit of green too, I think. Just to get a little bit of the greens in there because those are trees that are in the back in the far distance. They're just far back so they kind of have that purple look to them. And we'll go over here and we'll, let's do the same thing. Let's get the purple there too as well and a little touch of green just to sort of get some mixture of color versus just one straight color. Okay, so now we're just going to continue. And again, like, let's just keep going with the trees. We have the colors mixed here. Um, we have that darker, darker green over here, which has got the blue in it. You know, you make some... I try to make some of those little small, tiny tree tops, the little pointy tops of the trees over here like this. And then... I notice there is a roof over here, and that is, now the trees get a little bit lighter over here, like that. That roof there is, I'm going to make that brown with a little touch of green, like that. Okay, and then we'll keep going with our greens here. And I notice there's some darker bits of green that are over here by this, like that. And I'll mix up a little more brown, green, nice olivey green. Then a little bit of that blue over here just to get a darker green mix going. Like that. Okay, and then we're going to keep going here. And some more treetop shapes like that. And then a few more over here we can see. Like that. And then we can start seeing some shadows. Blue. over here on this side and basically it's just we're mixing or we're just we're kind of looking at the shapes and um, painting the shapes that we're seeing and Adding those tiny bits of treetops really help a lot.
and then sometimes you'll find that things will change and you'll have uh, some things turn out a little different than maybe the painting. I think I painted over a roof over here. But I'm not too concerned about it. There was a roof over here, I think. Maybe not. In any case, I'm going to get some more blue and brown. Kind of a bluish brown. Maybe a touch of black. Rinse off my brush, add just a touch of water to it, maybe a little red. I think that looks good. And then we'll do this roof here. These brushes are great that come with the set. I kind of, I keep pushing down the brush like this and like this. And then you can kind of see how that's got a really nice point. You can get a really nice point like that. If you kind of flatten out the brush on both sides like this, and then you flip it over the other side. Almost like flipping a pancake or an egg in a, in, a, in a pan. One side, fan it out. Other side, fan it out. And then if you turn it this way, you can kind of see how it's... And then you can get some of those really nice bits of uh, treetops. And then you can get some good details too, as well. On the roofs, you can paint your roofs in really nicely. And then I rinse off my brush and I take off some of the water. And then I just want to soften that edge at the top of the roof here. Like that. And then this roof here has just got a touch of color. So I'm just picking up a tiny bit of color, not much at all. And it's got a little bit of gold and orange too. Let me try to use some some yellow and orange in there I see some of that in the in the photograph anyway I'm just picking up some of this blue I have left over in the palette. I do see some blue in the roofs too. Then this here is a dark blue. The uh, one silo. Let's get the silo. We'll take blue and a touch of black. I notice that's really, really dark blue. So it's almost like a Payne's Gray. So you can almost make a Payne's Gray or a um, ivory black by just... If you add blue... I rinse off my brush, take off some water, and I take some blue and mix it with black. It kind of gives it a really nice, almost like a uh, super dark blue, like a navy, like a navy blue, a little bit darker than a, even, almost like a French ultramarine blue, like that, or even a Prussian blue. Looks good, and then we just go in and. And I'll paint only half the silo uh, going vertically like this, like this. Then I'll rinse off the brush, tap off the water, and then I'll use a damp brush and then just that's where the light is kind of hitting the silo so you'll see some of the, the darker side over here and then the shadow like that and then this one is more of a brownish color so let's get some brown the silo is like a brownish orange kind of like a maybe a little bit of blue in there kind of a darker brown so I'll add a little blue touch of blue just a little bit and we'll do the same thing too we're gonna go now this might be better if we were, probably better to, 
it's probably better to leave a little white line next to the other silo so we don't kind of like uh, blend those paints together it might not look so good so let's kind of keep these two silos separate for right now and then you can always go back in and add a little bit of a damp brush to that line to kind of blend that line in a little bit like we did over here with the roof up top here and uh, that should do it and then we have a little bit of that blue up here like that and I rinse off the brush again and dry off some of that water just so I have a damp brush and then I can do some shadowing like that and the same thing here I'll soften this side of the silo maybe add a little bit of dark over there like that and that looks fine and let's get some of that red barn so we use some red over here and that is kind of like an orangey red barn with a little bit of brown to gray down the red you can get that really nice barn red looking color by just red and then add some brown to it and it kind of gives it that nice dark rich reddish brown color like that very familiar barn color we always see it's kind of like a brick red almost and we'll just do that we'll get that there's no windows on this barn so we're just going to go right across and get that in and again you're using almost no water at all just maybe a damp brush and work everything with a damp brush if you can most of all these most all washes that we're doing in here are very much just a damp brush and then using the paint that's in the uh, tr the uh, palette here okay and then we're going to use some of that dark again for over here right on the side of the barn here like that that's the side of the back of the barn and then we have We are making good progress. Let's do some purple over here. And that purple color will look good. Ties in with the, uh, the side over here. So that all ties together so it almost looks like you can see through those trees to the mountains in the background which is nice you have almost like a feeling of um there's some like uh three-dimensional quality and almost like some really nice kind of like lattice kind of feel where you can see through things so there we can see through these trees to the uh, purplish mountains in the background we could have left something over here that would have been kind of good to do but we painted over it again we all we always learn from our paintings as we go and um, we'll do a little bit of orange here. Rinse off the brush. And I just see a little bit of a little bit of light orange on these barns here. Right, now's a good time for a break we've been working quite a bit maybe 20 minutes now so let's let's actually take a break and we'll let this start to draw it's, it's actually drawing pretty nicely as we go but let's just uh, take a break and um, we again we have a lot done here so far this is really the main subject matter the real exciting colors rich colors the dark tonal values a lot of the darks are right through here so that's really important we're going to get those darks in first 
And then now it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the painting again, and we'll get the fields in as well soon. We're going to finish up over here on these buildings, on the barns and the um, the uh, farmhouses here, and uh, all the uh, utility sheds and everything that's going on there. And then we will um, keep um, working. Just we need a break quick. And I always mention too, as we're taking a break, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know that uh, you enjoy this type of subject matter as far as we're doing barns and uh, farms and, um, you know, the, the landscapes uh, style paintings. And um, if you haven't subscribed, and if it's your first time here, thank you so much for coming by. I'm so glad you're here. You're at the right place at the right time. We're having a great time on my channel. I've been on YouTube for five years now or more, and we're just doing the same thing um, each week to get your skills uh, polished and set in place so that whenever you're working going forward, if you're just starting out, you're going to learn all the key ingredients you need um, to learn watercolor. And it just is a matter of time of practicing them over and over until they become second nature, much like um, if you're driving a car. It's a little awkward at first. You're, you're kind of trying to concentrate on a lot of different things at one time. The steering wheel, the gas, the brakes, the signals, paying attention to traffic, people walking by the car if you're driving you have to stop and all these different things going on but then after a couple of years of driving two three years of driving you really get the hang of it it's a, more of a relaxed type of thing when you're driving you're still you know alert and paying attention but you kind of like you know the whole system how everything works all the things you have to do and it goes much more smoothly and that's the same exact thing I, that's the best way i can describe it as far as watercolor goes, it's a lot of moving parts in the beginning, a lot of different things going on at one time. But if you're on my channel, I guarantee you, you're going to learn all the key things you need to know on a consistent basis. Because I always mention them in my videos and I always cover them. And this way you'll have that foundation of the knowledge and all the methods and techniques you need in watercolor to really uh, be able to create good paintings and enjoy yourself and have all those good um habits in place that are going to help you to be able to really create, you know, really good looking paintings and have fun and not, um, you know, having too many issues with um, having problems with your painting. So that's my main goal here. So thanks for again, stopping by. If, if you're brand new here, you're again, you're in, in good hands with me here. Um, many of you have been here for, you know, many years now, and I thank you so much for that. And many people are always sending me emails and pictures and they're all, many, many people are all creating such beautiful paintings. Um, I'm really so impressed with everybody, how everyone is coming along. And so, um, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and, um, we'll, uh, get started again. All right. We're picking back up again. And uh, I thought what I would do, maybe um, let me know in the comments section if you like this next segment. We're going to actually zoom in a little bit into the picture. Um, so you can kind of see um, that there's a lot of colors. We mixed a lot of different interesting variations on the colors we're using, but we really just we didn't get too um, complex with our um, color mixes. We really kind of went part by part. Like the trees, we basically made like an olive green on the right and then like a little bit of a cooler darker green for the left side of the trees. So that was basically using the greens with a little bit of blue and a little bit of brown to for the olive green on the right hand side of the tree. So that was one kind of variation we did with the greens. But what I'll do is let me zoom in a little bit closer and I'll kind of explain the colors just a little bit because I know I've gotten a couple questions recently about people wanting me to go over the color mixes and things that we're using. So let me do that. I'll just move the palette a second here. And um, I kind of have the colors memorized for a long time now because I, that's why I always say if you can, if you can um, use the same colors over and over and over again. And of course, if you're an extreme beginner and you're working with this palette, which we do on the Extreme Beginners series of uh, videos, if you're using this palette over and over and over again, you're just eventually going to normally start to mix different variations of your colors on your palette. But it does take time. you got to give yourself patience. Don't rush things and don't feel like you have to have this stuff done overnight as far as memorizing your colors and things. But if you do stick with either one palette just like this, or you stick with a, a standard palette that you create when you're using your tube paints, 
I, I have mine online. You'll see many of my videos. You can go back in my archives and just type in Chris Petrie watercolor palette or paints, type Chris Petrie paints. You'll see I have a dozen or more videos on all my palettes I use in the different colors I use. And basically I stick with the same colors. My palettes might change a little bit. I might use a few different palettes, but my colors are always the same. Once in a while I'll add an extra color here and there. But this one's fun to work with because I can kind of mix the colors that I normally use in my other palette, which is more my professional palette, I would say, where I use tube colors. I can mix all of my tube colors with these colors here. I just have to adjust them a little bit. Like, again, I made a nice olive green by using this darker green up here, and I add a little brown to it, and it makes a beautiful um, olive green. So again, I'll kind of show you the close-up picture of the um, passage here. Of the, um, we'll zoom in just a little bit. So again, let me know in the comment section if this is helpful. Zooming into the picture, you'll kind of see the pencil drawing a little better too. I think. All right, so there we go. And so basically, the color variations again. I would just mention is like for the let's say this here, the the distant mountains on the ends. I kind of call this like our bookends here. So we have kind of like bookends on our scene here. And then we have the buildings all in between and the trees and so forth. And the um, barns and all that. So here this was basically just like purple. Uh, so I use like a purple out of the palette with maybe a touch of blue and a little bit of green. And I mix that. So that was basically a purple with a little green in it to give us a little variation there. And then moving into the trees, we just discussed that, right? We talked about... I use some darker uh, green with some blue in there to get our darker greens here, maybe some pine trees, and then also some olivey green, which I made with the green and the burnt umber with a little bit of burnt umber in there to make an olive green. So we got a lot of variation with our green with a little bit of blue for the cooler side, the shade side over here, and then the warmer side, the olive green on the right-hand sides of the trees. And maybe over here I just used the darker, darker greens. So that's another way of making variations, just adding a few colors together that are kind of in the same family of colors. Um, for the silos, again, I use pretty much just the blue in my palette with maybe a touch of black to make it a little darker blue. And then here we made a little bit of an interesting, like, kind of a brown, rusty color, which maybe we use some brown out of the palette with a little bit of maybe red or orange. Simple enough. Um, the roofs we used... Uh, a little bit of orange, a little bit of blue, a little tiny bit of green. We made this very light washes for the roofs and the buildings here. Little tiny touch of orange here. Just a little tiny bit, um, bit of orange and blue. A little bit of blue. And then here <clears throat> we had the uh, we had the red, which we made with um, our red and a little bit of burnt umber to make it like sort of a like a clay or brick color red, almost like a burgundy red. That's like a burgundy, turns out. It looks like a burgundy kind of red. Um, so we made that with you know some burnt umber, some red from the palette. And uh, that's really the colors. And then you know some light brown, some medium brown with some blue. Just trying to get some variations in colors. But you can see they all kind of blend nicely together. And I try to repeat the colors within the uh, grayer colors that I mix here. So if I'm mixing a brown color for this roof, I'll mix brown with a little bit of maybe, let's say, the purple or the green, just to get some of those colors to like harmonize with that roof there. And the same thing over here. Here I'm making more of a purplish brown roof with a little bit of a touch of green maybe. You can kind of see I take some mixes from the palette and mix some other colors in there. But the main thing is I'm kind of sticking with maybe just one or two colors. Um, uh, to make the mixes and I keep using the same colors over and over repeating all the same colors as I'm doing all these different mixes for the most part so that's really kind of the idea on this and let's um maybe I'll just stick with you kind of see the colors I'm using that's not a big mystery um let's do some painting we'll do some of the fields here so I'm going to just I'll set up my phone a little bit away from the camera here so I'll keep the, again, let me know how this works out if if you're okay doing, looking at some of the more close-up pictures of this so we can kind of see 
maybe the more details of what we're doing here. So now I'm going to start getting into the fields. Now there was nothing fancy about the grass fields and the uh, kind of like the uh, brown uh, hay and grass fields. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of um, what I would call like a yellow ochre color by using my uh, my only one yellow in my palette and then some burnt umber mixed in with that and then maybe a touch of orange. And then I just mix it up until I get the right mixture so there's no real um, mystery to it. You add um, probably better to start with the yellow and then add tiny bits of the green, uh, the brown into the yellow and that's how you can kind of get your color of the um, the color of the uh, field correct so that's what I'm going to do and I added a little touch of red so let's see how this looks I'll start out with a little bit like that and it's a little bit dark maybe so I'll add some more gold some yellow That's a little better. So this is the uh, this is like the hay and like uh, grass along the farmhouse and the barns, the silos. Okay. And then we're going to do some greens, so I think we need a more yellow in that. That's a little better. I think it's more of a lively green. So that would kind of be more of the yellow mixture. So I added a little bit of yellow to my green. And then I'll just take my brush and go along here like so. And I always mention practice your brush strokes once in a while. Just take a sheet of watercolor paper and in my new watercolor book you'll see I have it uh, in the description below in the video. My new book I, I cover how to do exercises with your brushwork so that you can kind of get used to doing them because really what happens is if you practice on a sheet of paper to the side when you're not painting a regular painting but just practice time fun time you'll you'll wind up using those same brush strokes um, and techniques and methods when you're painting your painting because you're just going to do what you're familiar with when you're painting if you don't practice let's say some new exercises for your brushwork then you're just going to stick with what you know and if you haven't practiced it, how are you going to know? So you actually have to go through the bit of a routine, but trust me, if you do that, you will be very, very happy with the results because it's really um, a lot of fun to uh, get our brush strokes practicing those like we're doing here. And again, we can change up things. Sometimes I'll just paint over an area And then I'll just paint this road like this. And this this continues through. So you can kind of see I'm using the same method here. I'm just going right. I just have my hand sliding across the, the bottom of my table where there's no paint or anything. So what I do is I work on a really large board so I always have room to rest my hand and my arm when I'm painting. Okay, so that was, um, I, there's a pencil line showing through there. I don't mind that. And again, this is, a, we're doing some practicing here. Some, It's a composition. We're not looking for perfection. And then now what I'll do is we'll, we'll get some more greens. And again, we're not, 
I'll show you once I'm done, I'll show you the mixes that I was using on the uh, camera. But this here is quite a bit of green, large area, so I'm just going to use a little bit of a larger brush. I grabbed my Simply Simmons number 9, and then we're just going to get that here, like so. I'll go for the more controlled brushwork versus going like this. I'll have my hand resting on the table and then I just keep that brush point on at all times like that. So essentially if you can keep the brush at all times on the paper it's better. The washes look much better. And then we'll just continue on here right across. And I'll usually take a tissue if I see some areas that maybe I can blot up a little bit of the like that. If you see an area that runs over to the next, you can kind of blot that up quickly. Alright, and then we're going to go back in and get some more of that. Yellow ochre type mix there. And again, I'll put on the camera right now the, the photograph so you can see it. Okay, so now we're getting toward the foreground here, and so we will notice that the grass is a little bit, has a little more gold and uh, some darker green too, so I'm going to mix up those. A bit of a darker green. That goes across here, the darker green. that. Then I can um, maybe blot a few areas just to a little bit of brown in there too. Maybe that kind of just changes things up a little bit so it doesn't look so um, uniform going across there. A couple of bits of color. And then we have a little more right along here. We have a bright green. And that's just really mostly yellow with a little touch of green in there. And you can get that really bright looking, kind of good looking green, lively green. Springtime green, leaf green. And I'll zoom out just a little bit. Sorry about that. There we go. So I use some yellow and uh, Made that a uh, little bit uh, more of a brighter green with the yellow. Then I just had a little bit of the spots of some grasses and things. 
a little bush or two here and there. So it's the foreground. Let's make it more detailed, the foreground here. And you can add a little bit of um, the uh, golden color here and there. So at this point, we're kind of you're kind of improving at this point. You kind of have everything you need. Your drawing's done. Once your drawing is complete and all set, then you're pretty much gonna just be mixing your colors according to what you see in the painting, uh, in the photograph, I should say. And then here we're gonna do the uh, hay and the truck here. So let's do this. That's a little bit. That's some green there. Let's get some green in there like that. And then this hay is pretty much like that. And then that has a little bit of a darker uh, feel to it, some of the... Uh, There's some darker shadows under there, like that. And there's some dark spots here and there. I like, I'm going to make the hay a couple of lines across there and then maybe just blot it up quick just to get some variation in there. And I'd let that dry. Probably better off to do some details in the hay um, when it dries. So you saw that I, I did the this golden, you know, yellow ochre kind of color in the hay bales here on top of these um, carts. So what I guess I meant to say is if you let that dry when you do that first wash of that yellow ochre over these hay stacks of hay on these carts, um, it, it'll be better that way if you can do it that way. Like let it dry and then come back and then add what, I, add what I'm doing here, which is like the darker little bits of highlights. But again, we're just having some fun. I will take a, a, just a quick break now to let this dry a little bit. And I think we'll do the horse. Actually, we, we'll do the horse next. But let's also work back up here again, because this is dry up here. So we can go back and work up here. So let's, uh, I'll just do some, I noticed this is like more of a grayish color here on the bottom of this barn here. So that would be that there. And then that roof is pretty light, so I'm going to leave that the way it is for now. I'll maybe get a little bit of a bluish uh, purple maybe for the uh, for this here. And then uh, those are pretty light too. This is a shadow color here. Let me add some shadow over here. So I'm just basically um, putting in some colors. I'll do the same over here. There's some greens over there. Some trees, I think, over here. And then a little bit of shadowing under here. And again, you'll let me know if this is good, that you're seeing the, the details of things. 
I'm um, using again my um, Simply Simmons number nine. It's a completely synthetic uh, round brush. And I'm just trying to get the uh, some shadows into there, like so. And uh, maybe a little bit of blue mixed in with that shadow color. Like that. And then this roof over here. Maybe this one's a little bit different. The roof there is like so. And then I'm going to just blend in some things over here. A little bit of just a little damp brush there is fine. Then I also wanted to try out this brush here. I've been using this every once in a while when I do very, very fine brushwork, like for something like, some, maybe sometimes a painting needs a really, really tremendously fine point. This one here is actually a Da Vinci um, Black Sable, it's called. And um, it's a 2-0 Da Vinci Black Sable, 1840, Germany, made in Germany. And this brush has a really, really super fine point. What I'll do is I'll use this to make the windows on these uh, barns here. And what that does is that just gives like, I can get those really good sh square shapes uh, on these windows and rectangular shapes like so. That looks good. And then the same thing here, I can get some really good details with these. And then there's also in the background, so I'll tap off some paint on my tissue because I want to make the, the events on the top of this uh, barn over here. And um, if there's any other maybe details we can make in the distance here. Not a lot of details in the distance usually. Um, I also forgot to do these windows on the first floor, so let's do those. And these are more like rect rectangular shapes here, these down here. One, two, and three. Like that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. I wouldn't worry about it. It doesn't have to be that perfect. We can do another couple here. Maybe we have um, maybe a door over here like that. So we'll put a, maybe a door here and there too. Some of these other washes we have to let dry. Maybe it, we can do a a door here. Yeah, we can do a door there like that. Perfect. So you can get some pretty nice details with these really small brushes and you probably have other brushes possibly. I know some of you have been painting a few. So you'll have some maybe brushes around that you can use that are very, very, you could even get it, get these type of things done with, with our regular um, Prangle 16 brush that comes with the set. You just have to be a little more careful with the brush and maybe not use as much water, maybe use just basically a dry brush with a little bit of paint. And that can probably work pretty well too. So already we have really a great feel for the, the total picture. And then again, I think we're kind of wrapping things up now. I will go back just quickly for you and show you some of the colors that we mixed before we uh, wrap up the video. Um, I'll do the horse though now. And I'll probably do that with that really fine point brush that we had too. I think that'll be the best thing. So I'll just add a little bit of brown and black for the horse. And very, very little detail for the horse. Just really like, I wouldn't do much. That's fine. A little bit of shadowing under the, um, underneath the cart. Like 
that. So we have our cards here and a bit of shadow there, maybe a little bit of red in the shadow. Like this over here. And again, let's add a little bit of shadow underneath the, maybe the horse, a little, little bit of shadow under there, just a tiny bit there. A little bit of shadow under there like so. Again, a little bit of shadowing going this way. And then we'll do some quick, and you can do as much as you want. We could do some of these details here, just some quick, I'm just going to do them fast so we can kind of roll, get rolling here. So you see I'm doing these kind of fast, a couple of them straight, most of them straight, a couple of them on a little bit of an angle, like that. These are over here. Those might be a little bit too large for the scale that we're doing right now. I can notice that it might be, I might have drawn those in a little bit too tall. So that's one thing when you're doing things like, you know, fences and anything like that. We just have to be mindful of the scale of things. So here you can tell I went too large with these posts probably. Because if these this is a horse, this is the cart and for the hay, these look like lar too large, the, the fence posts. But that's forgivable. We can, we can do that. It's not going to make or break the painting. But the main thing is we're having fun here. So we, I learn for the next time. When I go back in to do a painting like this, again, I'm going to say to myself, I want to be extra careful that I'm doing a careful rendering in my pencil drawing of how high these stakes are or the fence posts, whatever I'm doing over here, so that it doesn't look out of um, perspective, isn't looking correct, and the, and the scale doesn't look correct. But I think overall we have a good looking painting here. It was a lot of fun. I'm really happy you joined me for this painting. Again, I'm going to zoom back a little bit. Let me take one more break. Or actually, we, let's take a break now. We've been working like 20 minutes or so. Let me just take one more quick break, and you don't even notice it at home, but I'll take a quick break, and then I'll come back, and I'll put my palette back on camera with the painting like we had it before, and this way I can just kind of explain the last few washes that we did on the painting where the, you know, fields are and things like that. So I'll be right back. <laughs> 